Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's still July 14th, and it's now 5.21 p.m. Wow, we were visiting folks for quite a while. All right, well, I'm back to my email, and this is found. This was found in my letter from Dawn. Um, it's, he titles it, Be Ready and Stay Ready. He got this July 8th at 1.35 a.m. And it's, uh, the name on it is Christian Robert. Okay. Last night I was praying around midnight and I heard the Lord say, There is no more time. The time is now. Be ready and stay ready. I believe this message is for everyone, the remnant, the bride, and also those, <coughs> excuse me, the sun is so bright, why does the sunshine make you sneeze? Um, all right, where was I? I believe this message is for everyone, the remnant, the bride and also those who have been called to go home early. That's apparently the way he understands it. I think that is all one group, myself. The remnant is a small portion. The bride is part of that small portion and there are some others, Jesus told me, that were going also. So those who have been called to go home early. As well as all the children and the infirm. All right, let me move on. I also felt he was saying that he will give out the assignments to his children very soon. And he wants to find us ready when the moment comes. Okay, and those assignments are given to those of us who are called, uh, I say raptured to heaven. We get our glorified body. We get our assignments and we come back to do whatever we're instructed to do to save those we've been praying for. Get them saved. Get them ready for the wheat harvest. All right. Um, in other words, when he says, be ready and stay ready, we are not supposed to have a close day with Jesus and read the Bible one day and then take a vacation day, and then go back and seek him again. Now, this is what he believes, okay? But I think he's right. He uh, Back to what he says, he is talking about walking on the narrow path consistently, faithfully, each and every day. What I heard very much reminds me of this warning in his word. KJV, Matthew twenty four forty two. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had not known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. So is that saying we're supposed to be able to figure out what watch he's coming in? We are admonished to know the season. Maybe not the exact day and hour, but we should be able to know based on signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, uh, what's going on down here on the world, in the world, all these people getting these brace yourself messages, they're all confirming each other as to what's going to happen this fall. And we know we were promised that if we pray, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things. Now, if you don't, there, some people. One came on here trying to tell me that doesn't mean it's a rapture. It doesn't mean you escape from the earth. Well, I'm sorry, that's what I believe because that's how the Bible 
if you go into the Hebrew and the Greek, it's a rapture. It's a raptos in Latin, harpazo in Greek. It means to be snatched up, to be taken away. You're not still here. Sorry, I got to scratch an itch. Okay. Anyway, uh, therefore, let me finish with the scripture. This is a long one. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom the Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. I am glad, sister, now this is him talking again, the man, uh, Christian Robert. I am glad Sister Elizabeth Marie recently posted those 17 qualities that characterize a ready servant. And he doesn't give them, but let me continue. As for me, I will print them out and pray over them, asking the Lord to help me walk in all of them each day. I believe placing them before my eyes daily will help me remember and program my day ahead of time. This is what she posted. Oh, okay. I didn't understand that when I first read it. <sighs> Sorry. When I sneezed, I got a little bit of runny nose. <sighs> um, this is what she posted. I then asked the Lord, How are we to be ready for your coming? I heard this. Alright, this is what she supposedly got from the Lord then. And I, I believe in every one of them, okay? Humble yourselves daily before me. Get rid of your prideful ways. Confess your sin daily. Believe in all things good. Reject evil and its ways. Spend quality time in prayer. Study my word. Serve and help those around you. Remain faithful to my word. Hear my voice. Walk in the spirit and not the flesh. Love me with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love others as yourself. Watch your tongue. Proclaim me from the rooftops. Sacrifice on my behalf. Do not be wise in your own eyes. I, I agree with every one of them that, that, could, that she heard them from the Lord because some of these things I tell you all the time, but others, I mean, I need to do better on studying the word. It's, I'm like, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? I'm like torn because I can ignore your emails and study the word. Or I could ignore comments. I could close off comments and have more time. I don't get as many comments as I do emails, though. And the emails is where I get generally get what I share. So I'm, I'm like, this is my way of proclaiming it from the rooftop, so to speak. Because it would be really hard for me to do that physically. But some of you could. When it says, proclaim me from the rooftops, he's, he may not mean that literally, but it's tell people about me. Be out there telling people about me. Find a way to do it. When it says, sacrifice on my behalf, 
that means give a little bit, you know, of your income to help a poor person eat that month, okay? And it might mean you don't get dessert for a week. That's a sacrifice, okay? You take it all to the Lord. Like, say, on some of these, you, you're like, how can I do that? Well, take it to the Lord. Pray about it. He'll put an idea in your head. You might say, how do I serve? What was that one that said serve? Um... Serve and help those around you. Okay, you might wonder, how can I serve and help those around you? Well, is there anybody in your neighborhood that you know struggles physically? Can you offer to mow their grass? Yeah, it's hot in a lot of places. Maybe you see them mow their grass, but they don't have a weed eater, so their weeds get out of control. Maybe you could offer... Hey, I noticed you don't have a weed eater. Can I come over and do your weeds for you? I would just like to do something nice for you to help you because I know you you don't have all the equipment I have. Just something to not make them feel like they're a charity case, but that you're just trying to help. That can be that can be tricky with people who are real prideful. They may accept your offer or they may say, I can do my stuff myself. Fine, you offered. If you run into prideful people that don't want your help, you've done your part. Okay? And tell them, okay, but if you change your mind, you let me know. Have a good day. Jesus loves you. And turn and go home. See? See? And so any of these that you have a problem with, you just take it to the Lord and you ask him, how do I do this? How do I do that? How, where am I going to get the time to do this, Lord? You know I love you. Okay, ask him to show you. Okay? All right, I'm going to end this here with that. All right, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video as it's a very good word. And it needs to go up and stay up. And I plead the blood of Jesus over my computer, myself, and my internet connection. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every single one of you and your devices and all your internet connections. Okay? And with that, I'll say, oh, let's remember, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Isaiah, what? 54, 17. Let me make sure I have that right. You know my brain. I think I have it memorized. Isaiah 54, quote, or colon, okay. Search. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Well, this is Old Testament. Remember, Jesus can, Jesus changed that part. We don't condemn. We have mercy. And we let Jesus be the judge. Okay? We love everybody. And we realize now that our war is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers. And uh, Jasper, he pulled his toy thing all the way over here by me so he could be by me and still have his... I'll have to post the little video that I made. It, it's hilarious. Okay. Um, so sorry. I interrupted the word of the Lord. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. Okay, the Lord shall condemn them. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. You see how the Old Testament has been changed? Jesus wants us to love everyone and realize that our war is not against the person. It is against the demons that make them be 
mm, you know, speak evil of us, make fun of us, mock us, you know, be scoffers and all that. Jesus will take care of them. Their day is coming if they do not repent and get right. Okay, so at least the part, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. I still say that is the same. You, you know, I can see how you might say, well, how, how can you say that part is still right and the other part is not? Well, because the first part is positive. It's it's not thinking negative. It's it's the the parts of the Old Testament that Jesus did away with are the parts where we get to judge like we can take our disobedient children out, they could, not us, and stone them to death. Okay, how negative is that? But if they're disobedient now, it's up to us to try to get them in line. But you can't no longer murder them. You're murdering them now to stone them because they're disobedient. Now you just put them out of your house because you don't want the demons causing them to act like that in your home. And that's so hard, isn't it? I'm talking about grown children at past 18. They can find a job, and it may be hard. They might have to live in their car. Hopefully they have one. Anyway, that's a whole nother video right there. So, I, that, that's how I'm taking it, and that's how I see it. But you can take that to the Lord yourself and ask him, Lord, how come it is part of the Old Testament we still can say and claim, like Psalm 91. I pray it every night. I, I say it at the end of my prayers and claim those promises because they're positive. They're things the Lord said he would do for us as opposed to things that we get to do to each other. Or have to do like sacrificing animals to confess our sins. That's another negative thing. Maybe that will help you understand. Okay. So with that I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.